Hi, I'm Dave, and welcome to JavaScript Basics. I'm really excited to be teaching this course. I love JavaScript. It's useful, it's fun, and it's available anywhere there's a web browser. JavaScript is a great first language to learn, and if you want to be a front-end web developer, you need to learn it. JavaScript started life as a simple little language intended to add a few interactive features to web pages. However, it's grown into a powerful programming language that's used on nearly every website in the world. JavaScript drives the front end of giant web applications like Google Maps, Gmail, and Facebook. It's even capable of running on the back end as a super fast web server. Before we jump into programming, let me take you through some of the places you can find JavaScript. I'll bet some of these will surprise you. JavaScript has always been used to add fun and useful additions to web pages. Simple photo galleries like the original Lightbox script make for fun and engaging web pages. You can use JavaScript to add interesting effects to a page. Check out this page, which animates as you scroll. With JavaScript, you can make ordinary web experiences like signing up at a site and filling in a form more exciting and engaging. And JavaScript lets you create very immersive web experiences, like this site for the author Philippa Gregory, which combines animation and a unique site navigation to create a compact, information-rich presentation. You can even make games using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, like this game, Super Jetroid. But JavaScript is used for more than just adding visual flair to a website. Web applications like Google Maps, Gmail, and Google Docs depend on JavaScript. Here I'm creating a new spreadsheet in Google Docs. Every part of the process, from creating a new document, to titling it, to adding numbers and calculations, uses JavaScript. But JavaScript isn't just limited to the web browser. It turns out that JavaScript can even be used on web servers. Node.js is a popular choice for server-side development. It offers great performance and easily handles lots of simultaneous users. It's a favorite of big companies like Walmart, PayPal, LinkedIn, Netflix, and Groupon, who have all started using Node.js to serve up at least some portion of their websites. JavaScript has even made its way to the desktop. Many of Adobe's products let you write scripts to automate them using JavaScript. You can use JavaScript to automate Photoshop, Acrobat, Dreamweaver, and After Effects, to name a few. There are even complete desktop applications written in JavaScript, like Breach, a web browser, or Brackets, a text editor for creating websites. It's written in JavaScript. And thanks to Google, you can build desktop apps called Chrome apps out of just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All of these are just a handful of the things that JavaScript is capable of. There's much more. You'll need to study a lot and work hard to build the next Gmail but the basics you're going to learn in this course provide the foundations for building complex user interfaces and web applications using JavaScript. Before we get started programming, I want to talk about what I'll cover in this course. JavaScript is a programming language, and like any language, it has its own vocabulary and grammar. Programmers call this syntax. A programming language's syntax is the different commands, special words, and punctuation you use to put together a program. Every programming language has its own syntax, just as English, Spanish, and Mandarin each have their own vocabulary and grammar. Writing a program is like writing a story using the vocabulary and grammar of the programming language. I'll also teach you programming concepts. These concepts won't just apply to JavaScript. They're common ideas you'll find in many programming languages. Things like variables, strings, conditional statements, and functions. In other words, I'll teach you basic programming concepts that you can apply to other programming languages, like PHP, Ruby, Java, or Python. As a programmer, it's also important to be able to talk like a programmer, so I'll introduce important vocabulary that's useful for you to know. These are programming terms that will come up often as you read, talk, and learn about JavaScript programming. For example, now you know the word syntax and what it means. If you forgot, it's a programming language's vocabulary and grammar. Lastly, you'll learn important programming techniques. These are best practices or proven ways to put together programs so they work better. For example, you'll learn how to use comments to make your programs easier to understand and use. 
Of course, you'll also do a lot of programming. In fact, in the next video, you'll dive right in and create your first JavaScript program. But before that, I want to leave you with one important point to remember. JavaScript is not Java. This is something that confuses a lot of people. Despite Java appearing in both names, they're unrelated programming languages. The confusion is all thanks to some non-technical business and marketing decisions made in the early days of the web. But don't you make this mistake. Just remember that JavaScript is not Java. Knowing this might save you a lot of embarrassment in a job interview someday. They say a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. In this video, we'll take that first step by creating a simple JavaScript program. I've organized this course so you can follow along in Workspaces, Treehouse's web-based text editor. If you haven't used Workspaces before, here's a quick intro. To get started with Workspaces, click the Launch Workspace button on this page. When the Workspace window opens, you can type a new name or leave it as is, then click Launch to open the Workspace. On the left side here are all of your files. You can add new files to the Workspace and open files that already exist. When you click the Preview button here, a new browser window opens and the index.html file in your Workspace is displayed. Keep this in mind. The preview button doesn't open the file you're currently working on in the workspace. It always opens the index.html file in the top level folder. If you haven't already, go ahead and launch the workspace on this page. It has a few starter files. Open the file scripts.js by clicking its name in the file listing. It's an empty file. Let's start with a simple command. Let's see what it does. Save the file then click the Preview button in the Workspaces window. Well, it doesn't do too much. It seems like something's missing. Let's try adding a message. Save the file and preview it again. Now there's a message. Cool. Alert is a command that's built into the browser. It opens a dialog box and displays a message. What we've typed here is called a JavaScript statement. A statement is like a sentence. And just as sentences end in a period, JavaScript statements end in a semicolon. You write programs by typing multiple statements, just like you write a paragraph by writing multiple sentences. Let's go back to our program and add another statement or line of programming code. Here's a new command, document.write. The word document represents the current web page, and write is a command that writes a message to the page. I'll talk more about this command and why there's a dot between document and write later on in this course. The important thing to understand now is that we can use JavaScript to write directly into a web page. Let's provide a message to this command. Save the file and preview it. Now we have two different ways to send messages, a dialog box and writing directly to the web page. Let's add one last line of code. So now we have three lines of code, and if we save the file and preview it, you can see an alert. Then when you close the alert, a text message appears, followed by another alert. There are two things to understand from this. First, a program is a set of statements that run one after the other. Second, one statement needs to be complete before the next statement runs. So the document.write command, which prints to the page, can't do its thing until the first alert command, which includes the user closing that dialog box, finishes. All right, you've started your JavaScript programming adventure. You've written your first program and learned two new commands, alert and document.write. In the next video, you'll learn where and how to add JavaScript to web pages. I mentioned in the first video that JavaScript is used in lots of different places, on web servers, in applications like Photoshop, and even to automate operating systems. In this course, I'm teaching you how to program JavaScript, but we'll be concentrating on how JavaScript works in a browser. A browser is the most common place you'll encounter JavaScript, and the easiest place to try out JavaScript programming. Browsers perform lots of different functions. They read and display content using HTML, they style that HTML following CSS rules, and they add interactivity to a page by following the instructions in a JavaScript program. Every browser has something called a JavaScript interpreter built into it. 
This is the part of the browser that reads and understands and runs the instructions in a JavaScript program. When a browser encounters JavaScript programming, the JavaScript interpreter looks at each statement in the program and does what the statement says to do. That is, your program runs as the JavaScript interpreter reads it. For example, in the last video, we saw that when the browser read a statement with an alert command, a dialog box appeared on the screen. Here's some vocabulary. When a browser reads and acts on a JavaScript program, we call that running the program. It's also called executing the program. So you'll often hear people say things like, when the browser executes this line of programming code, a dialog box appears on the screen. Web browsers let you place JavaScript code in several different places. For example, in the last video, we added code to a file named scripts.js. It's very common to put all of your JavaScript code into a file that's separate from the actual HTML, like this. If you want to follow along, you can launch the workspace on this page. In workspaces, you can add a new file by going to the File menu and choosing File, New File. To create a new JavaScript file, we just provide a name followed by a file extension of .js. I called this file scripts.js. A JavaScript file doesn't have to be named that. You could name the file app.js, widget.js, or even mycoolprogram.js. Files that end in .js contain just JavaScript code. Don't put HTML or CSS in them, just JavaScript. Now let's add a line of code. Now to link this file to the HTML file, we use the HTML script tag. This tag has an attribute named src or source, just like the HTML image tag. The source attribute tells the browser where to find the JavaScript file, and the browser then loads the JavaScript from that file to the web page. Let's add script tags to this HTML page. I'll open the index.html file in the workspace and add the script tag inside the head of the document. You can also add JavaScript directly into a web page by placing your JavaScript code inside a pair of script tags like this. One thing you can't do, however, is to link to a JavaScript file using the SRC property and insert JavaScript code into the same script tags. You must have one script tag per linked file and another script tag for any programming you add directly to a web page. It's perfectly okay to have more than one set of script tags on a page, like you see here. And it's necessary if you want to link more than one JavaScript file to a page. Now when I save these files and preview the workspace, you can see that the linked file, scripts.js, runs first because it appears in the HTML before the other script tag. You can place the script tags almost anywhere in a web page, but most typically, you'll find script tags placed in either the head of the page, usually just before the closing head, or within the body of the page, just before the closing body tag. One advantage of placing your script near the bottom of the page is that it lets the browser load and display any HTML before running the JavaScript. See what happens if I move this script tag to the bottom of the page. When I save this file and preview the workspace now, the alert in the page loads first. Then the content of the page displays, see the headline, then the alert from the scripts.js file appears. In this course, I'll be using a separate JavaScript file and link to it near the bottom of the page just before the closing body tag, like this. As you start programming, you'll find out really fast that it's easy to make a mistake. In fact, you'll probably make a lot of mistakes as you start programming. Computers are unforgiving. One typo and your entire program breaks. In fact, most of the mistakes you'll make in the beginning will be simple typing errors, leaving off a quote mark or mistyping a command like alert. Finding and fixing problems is a big part of programming. Fortunately, browsers provide tools that help you find mistakes so you can fix your programs. The most important is the JavaScript console. All popular browsers have a JavaScript console, which lists any errors that the browser's JavaScript interpreter encounters. 
In the teacher's notes below, I've listed the keyboard shortcuts for accessing the JavaScript console in different web browsers. Let's look at how you might identify and fix a problem in a JavaScript program. You can follow along by opening the workspace for this video. Just click the Launch Workspace button. I'm going to preview this workspace in a browser by clicking the Preview button. Hmm, nothing's happening. I think an alert dialog box is supposed to appear. Maybe the console can tell me why. I'm using Chrome here. In Chrome, you can open the console from the Settings menu. Or use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl-Shift-J on Windows or Command-Option-J on Macs. The console says that I have a syntax error. Remember, a program's syntax is its vocabulary and grammar, so I made a basic grammatical mistake. The exact error is unexpected identifier. Well, this isn't really that helpful because many things can cause that error. But there is one useful piece of information on the right side. This tells me that the error is in the script.js file on line 1. In fact, that's a link that, when clicked, displays the exact line in the console. Do you remember how the alert command works? You need to send it a piece of information inside quote marks like this. Let's look at the code in the workspace. Can you see the problem? If you look inside the alert command, you'll see that there's only one quote mark at the end of the message. You'll see later in this course, programming often involves pairs of punctuation marks, like an opening quote mark and a closing quote mark, or an opening parentheses and a closing parentheses. So adding another quote mark at the beginning of the message should fix this. Let's see, I'll save this file and preview it. Yep, it does, there's the alert box. But something else is wrong. There should be a message printed to the screen using the document.write command. Let's check the console again. Aha, there's another error. Something about a function not being defined. You'll learn more about functions later in this course, but for now, just know that both alert and document.write are functions. So something is wrong with the function on line 2. Can you see the problem? It's a spelling error. The W in write is missing. I'll go back to workspaces, fix that, save the file. One thing about syntax errors, even if a program has many syntax errors, the console only shows you the first one. Fix that, and then the console will show you the next one. Fix that error, and you'll see the next syntax error listed. And so on, and so on, and so on. This was a simple example, but when you have a bigger program that's 10, 20, or 100 lines of programming code long, then you'll be glad that the console can point you to the exact line where errors occur. The console is also a place where you can write messages. The console.log function lets you print messages into the console. As you'll see later, this can come in very handy when trying to figure out what's going on inside a program. You can use it to print messages as your programs run. Let's give it a try. Let's print out a message letting us know that the JavaScript program has completed. The console.log command works a lot like the alert or document.write commands we saw earlier. You put a message inside the parentheses, and that message is spit out into the console. Let's see how it works. I'll save the file and preview the workspace. Make sure the console is open. Yep, and there's the message. We'll use this command a lot in this course to help us keep track of things happening in our programs. Now you've learned three different ways to output messages. In a dialog box with alert, on the page with document.write, and in the console with console.log. Now you've got the basics in place, and we're ready to explore details of JavaScript syntax and programming. But first, why don't you try a challenge in the next video? Now it's time for you to try to fix or debug a program. Let's pretend your friend is also taking this course, and she wrote a program, but it doesn't seem to be working. She's not sure why, and she's asked you for help. Open the workspace on this page and preview it. Use the console to locate errors and fix them in the workspace editor. As an added test, add two console.log statements, one at the beginning of the JavaScript program saying start program, and another at the end of the program saying end program. Give it a try, and in the next video, I'll take you through the solution. How'd it go? Were you able to spot the errors and add the proper console.log statements? Here's how I did it.
First thing I'll do is preview the workspace and open the console. Okay, there's a problem at line two. I'll click the link in the console and we, it will show me the line with the error. What's missing? Okay, I see the problem. There should be quote marks around the message. I'll go to workspaces, make the change, save the file and preview it again. Great. Both alerts appear, but there's something else wrong. I'll check the console again. Notice that there's an error, but there's no line number. This is kind of a bug in Chrome. Chrome sometimes doesn't list the line number. Usually reloading the page fixes that and displays the line number where the error occurred. Okay, now there's an error on line four, a problem with the function. It says <laughs> document.wrong. Well, that's not right. So I'll change it to write. Save the file and preview it. Perfect. Now it's time to add the console.log messages. One should go at the beginning of the program and one more at the end. I'll save the file and see if the message appears in the console. Great, it does. All right, you've got the basics down now and it's time to jump into more complex programming. In the next stage, we'll learn about different kinds of information and how to keep track of it using variables. See you there.